Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife. It's currently one minute to sunrise and I've come to Strumpshaw Fen in the middle of Norfolk in search of common lizards. Now, at the moment, it's really overcast. So, while I wait for it to warm up and for the lizards to come out, I'm gonna take a tour of the reserve and see what other wildlife I can find. Let's get going. Strumpshaw Fen runs along the bank of the River Yare, around six miles east of Norwich. From the entrance of the reserve is a very short walk to the first hide. This is called Reception Hide and usually gives great views way out across the reserve. On a morning like this, it's hard not to wonder what wildlife is hiding out there in the mist. One creature that I could see was this grey heron. Herons spend a lot of their time in and around water and mud, which can cause their delicate feathers to get messy. To solve this, they have special feathers on their breasts that produce a fine white dust. They use a comb-like claw on their middle toe to brush this dust through the rest of their feathers, which helps to keep them clean and dry. There are four main habitats at Strumpshaw, reed beds, meadows, water and woodlands, and I explored as much of them as I could whilst I waited for the lizards to emerge. As I came to the first crossroads, where the pathway splits into three, I had a quick look out across a meadow and couldn't believe that a young Chinese water deer was just a few metres away from me. It didn't stay for long, but the meadow is massive and there was plenty more hiding places for other deer. Sure enough, way off in amongst the mist, I spotted this adult. Look closely at its mouth and you might spot its tusks protruding over its bottom lip. Apparently, these can be moved forwards for fighting, but also held back and out of the way for eating and grooming. I followed the path left through a short woodland trail, but didn't spot any wildlife on my way through the woods. However, as I came out of the woods and onto a wider track, I spotted another non-native species of deer. This is a female monkjack, and at first, she seemed completely oblivious to my presence. That was until a male followed her out of the trackside vegetation. He saw me almost straight away and dashed back into the undergrowth. Luckily, she held her nerve and stayed in view. Monkjack were introduced to the UK in 1838 and have spread with the help of people from southern England to Wales and Ireland. As yet, they haven't established a population in Scotland, but it's only a matter of time before they do. As I followed the track, the habitat began to open up, and as I looked out across an overgrown area of wet meadow, I realised that something was looking back at me. Another Chinese water deer. One thing I've noticed about this species is that when they're amongst tall grass and plants, they do not tend to run straight away, but rather remain entirely still and hope not to be seen. This could be because their natural predators in Asia don't have very good colour vision, so they would normally be camouflaged from any threat. This staring competition continued for a couple of minutes until I tried to move and the deer seized its chance and made a run for it. The next part of the track went past Strumpshaw Victorian Pump House, which was built to help drain the surrounding land. If you'd like to know more about the draining of Norfolk and some of the other wildlife that has benefited from it, check out my recent tour of the Halvergate Marshes. There'll be a link for this down below. So as I'm walking along the bank here, I'm keeping a close eye on these sleepers because although it's early, some of the lizards might have came out already, just like me, to soak up some of the early morning sun. I didn't see any lizards along this bit of the route, but I did see an equally exciting species. This common kestrel made an appearance 
and landed on some fence posts about 100 metres away. Kestrels are one of our smaller birds of prey and are often seen hovering in mid-air in search of voles to eat. These make up the majority of their diet, but they will also take mice, shrews, small birds and worms. This one stayed for a few minutes, showing off its beautiful speckled feathering in the early morning light before flying off to search for voles elsewhere. I followed the riverside path back towards the centre of the reserve and decided to see if Tower Hyde would reveal any more of the awesome inhabitants. I was not disappointed, even before seeing any wildlife the fantastic view made the stairs worth climbing. Close into the hide, there were several shovelers gliding across the mirror-like water. These birds get their name from their oversized, flattened bills. This shape is known as spatula and helps the bird to sift small invertebrates and plant matter from the water to eat. On the far side of the pool, perched precariously on top of a small tree, there was a great white egret. These birds are a close relative of the grey heron, are a similar size and are a fairly new arrival to the UK. They were first recorded breeding on the Somerset levels in 2012 and are gradually spreading across the country. Whilst I watched the egret, another expert angler made a brief appearance a kingfisher. After surveying the shallows, it made a quick dive into the water and then flew away to consume whatever it caught. Well, I've just left Tower High because the sun has started to clear the mist and it means it's time for me to go and find some lizards. As is almost always the way, nature had other plans and I barely made it 50 metres down the track before Strumpshaw threw up another bird surprise. Well how lucky am I, as I was walking along this riverside track I heard this pinging noise which you might be able to hear right now and then over there in the reed beds is a flock of bearded tits. Bearded tits are small reed bed specialists that are also known as bearded reedlings. From this female's appearance, you may wonder where the bearded in their name comes from, but once you see a male, it might become a little bit more obvious. They have black markings on either side of their grey heads that more resembles a moustache than a beard, but who am I to judge hairstyles? This is only the third time that I've ever seen bearded tits in the UK, and that's for a good reason. There are only 630 breeding pairs in the whole country. With the bearded tits gone, I continued down the path, turning inland towards Fen Hyde. This is where I've seen lizards before, so I began to get hopeful, and for a really good reason. Almost straight away, I spotted this adult lizard basking on one of the pathside sleepers. Lizards, like other reptiles, are cold blooded and rely on the sun's warmth to heat their bodies. These sleepers warm up fast in the direct sunlight to provide the perfect spot for some early morning basking and word seems to have got out. A few metres along and there was a second adult lizard. This one seems to have an injured back. At around 7cm long, this third lizard must have only been born recently. Common lizards are also known as viviparous lizards because the females hold fertilised eggs inside them until they are fully developed, releasing the young in a soft egg sac that tears as they are released or shortly afterwards. The newborn lizards are completely independent and must fend for themselves straight away. Well, how great was that? Not one lizard, not two lizards, but three, and one of them was a newborn. There's still quite a bit of track to go, so maybe we're gonna find some more.
Sure enough, I did spot a few more lizards, with the most beautiful being this green coloured individual. If you look closely around the base of its left forearm, you'll see some pinkish blobs. These are parasitic ticks. Several of the lizards at Shrumpshaw had them, always around their forelimbs. I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of lizards in the past, but I've never noticed ticks on them before. Maybe Strumpshaw is just a great place for ticks, or maybe there are other factors involved. Whilst looking for lizards, I also saw this menacing looking dark bush cricket. The spike at the bottom of her body is not some lethal weapon, but actually an ovipositor through which she will lay her eggs. Having seen the species I came for, I started to head back towards the car park, but couldn't avoid popping into Fen Hyde on the way. The mist had yet to clear from over the reed bed and water, but I still managed to get a view of the largest harrier in the world, the Marsh Harrier. These birds were once so common in Norfolk that they were actually known as the Norfolk Hawk, but like so many other raptors, they suffered massive declines over the 19th century and went completely extinct as an English breeding bird. Fortunately, they are now making a comeback and spreading once more over the UK. Well here I am back at the car and what a fantastic morning at Strumpshaw it's been. I managed to see so many species in just three hours and now it's time for me to go to work. If you enjoyed this video then check out this video that's popping up here or this video that's popping up here and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the future stuff that I put out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.